of it? No, you don't. Let's do it. All right, Dale, yeah. let's get serious. Yeah, they really that's, feel good. Like y'all that's ready good to go question to my nigga. Yeah. I ain't never <laughs> seen motherfuckers ready to go to work. <laughs> I ain't never seen. Play and, some and, pimping, and I didn't know you was going to make it one of these nights. Can I sip? With you, oh, yeah, sure. you're gonna of make course. it a customer. See, you're not even ready to go to work. I mean, anybody it, else? Well, I, I thank ain't you, know. brother. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. And then you gotta start the right? matches outfit. Thank That's you. crazy. Come on. That's, That's the okay. type of shit you doing shit when you doing and getting paid for. Why are you? Other niggas being lazy. Let's kick it off, cause it's never full gaze. Had a lady, she tried to graze me. I get her pregnant, she might have two or three babies. And one is how I'm tripping. living and chilling, cause I be pimping. Ooh. And I be ducking on hoes like Bar Simpson. But I need a bitch with blue hair like Mar Simpson. Mar Simpson. I'm getting homer, trying to get the doma. Do you smell the aroma of this marijuana? Put a nigga in a coma. Now bring it back. Just like a spine. I start at six, but I don't never stop at nine. Don't let it go over your head. Yeah, I ain't scared. Do we get one more? Had bitches licking on my left leg. Cause I'm that nigga. I do it bigger. And I've been in the basement, but my name ain't Tigger. Oh, wait. Yeah. Damn. That's what you said. My shit too Whoa. big, can't nothing go over my head. Okay, that's what you say. I keep it going. Yeah. I keep on flowing. Come on. And everybody in the building, they be knowing. They be knowing. You say you dunking on niggas like Bob Simpson. Yes, sir. Well, I'm a follow up like Dominique Wilk. Come on. Cause I'm a go. That's how you know. Trinidad James in the motherfucking home. Oh, nigga, man. nigga, nigga. I said, all go everything. Nigga, yeah. nigga. I had a girl with some good coochie. Even had an earring in it. Just wait a minute. And let me tell you what I said, what I just said. Yeah, so she spread the legs. I seen the piercing. I'm like, really? This what we doing? Mm. I chip my tooth because on the coochie I be chewing. You be chewing? On the coochie. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's nasty. I will be doing this shit since like the 80s. Like Ooh. the 80s. Yeah, that's how you seen. You chew on the coochie, Nav Green, he get mean, he be eating it. And don't be sham. Because you could tell from the way that he be tan through hey, meals that he on the diet. tell you about this dude and what he doing. Because every time he get the coochie, it be room. Ooh. Yep. He be walking in listening to Lil Uzi. Ooh. I seen this nigga right here make a coochie smoothie. Ooh. Damn. Ooh. That's a manwich. I heard you made a whole coochie sandwich and you manned it. Damn. Listen that noise he just made. What the fuck was that? Do it one more time, my Jay. See, she go be. <laughs> God damn it. Why you say that? Because now I want a coochie sandwich. <laughs> Hey man, welcome back to the 85 yeah. South Show. Let's go. Let's go. Woo. Oh, it's not over. It's not over. It's just bring it back. Bring it back. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, hold on. Well, let's get it right back where it was. This one right here is for the mothers and the cousins okay. and step brothers. This for the gangsters and the pimps and the hustlers. Come on. This for the crooks. Who reading books? Uh -huh. This for the pretty girls that's hung up on their looks. That's right. This for the niggas yeah. that do it bigger. Okay. This for the white folks with big figures. Big, big this for the shit. foreigners. Mm. This for the immigrants. Okay. Mm. This for the niggas who be wearing all them crazy pants. This for the chicks yes. with real hair that's longer than weave. This for the people who bought teeth that they didn't even need. Ooh. Hey, uh, that was kind of mean. I think you talking about me with my uncircumcised jeans, but it's okay. Yeah, I get it right. These bitches make me walk down the steps like Willie Dynamite. I ain't playing. Hear what I'm saying? Trinidad James in the trap, and we ain't playing. You know it's down. Yes, sir. You know it's up. Yes, sir. J.O. went playing that pimping. That what the fuck? Yes, sir. Hey, man, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 85 South Show. Vote it. This podcast was voted most likely to smell like weed. Oh, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Most likely. Most likely. We got a very special guest in Come the trap with us today. Come on, man. You know, we on the whole street with this ghetto legend shit. Come on. So we went and got us a certified ghetto legend. Come on. Man, A-time. this dude started off 
with a mixtape, giving them out in the city for the free, man. I'm talking about hustling everywhere you went, you saw them. I mean, I, I picked up one at the mall one day buying some shoes. Yeah. I fucked with it, I played it. <clears throat> Parlayed that shit to some of the, being part of some of the biggest hits. Yeah. Some of your favorite songs. All the way. Yeah. One of the coldest writers. Come one on. of the most creative motherfuckers that ever come through here, man. Very entertaining. Come on. Hey, man, you might know him as the shoe plug. Some come people on. call the nigga Nick James. Come on. Some people call him Trinidad. He introduced himself to the hoes as just dad. Come on, man. <laughs> My plug partner. Come on, man. Trinidad James. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. First of all, right. Yeah, you got a real short. His arm short. His arm short. He got alligator arm. Fuck with you. Not fuck with you. Nah, man, boy. I want to say welcome back to the trap. Thank you. First yeah. time in the trap trap. Right. You've been a part of plenty of traps. Oh, yeah, I was in the pre trap. Yeah. yeah. Pre trap. Yeah. yeah. So, man, just welcome. Make yourself at home. Oh, yeah. I love it, man. How y'all feeling today? Shit, amazing. Amazing, nice. man. Nice, it's, nice. it's, you know, like, you had one of them them moments in hip hop that is you can't you can't even explain. You know, it's it's not too many people who had that moment where you take over the whole world on your first one. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that. You know, I don't even know what to compare it to because it's it's everybody knew that song. I mean, my daughter used used to be singing that shit when it first came out, and she was a little girl. I'm like, whoa, pop the Molly. I'm sweat. That was whoa. that part too. And it was everybody. I mean, and it's just like that that energy that you created with that, like. I always wanted to ask, like, is it a level of pressure that comes with having one that's so major on your first one? Is it easier to never have to try to create that again, or do you continuously try to create that again? Um, it's all about the resources and knowledge that you come into it with it. Mm -hmm. um, if you asked me this question 10 years ago, I'd be like, nigga, this shit hard. Don't right. ask me this question right now. Right. Or whatever, but 10 years, <laughs> 10 years later, I still look good, I'm still successful, and I feel even better about the 10 years in front of me. I'm gonna tell you that it's a balance of both because <clears throat> when you do win big in the beginning, um, the resources that are open to you are amazing. It's great. Mm. You know, um, the resources to make something else like that, it is there, but you have to understand your artist type. And what I mean by that is um, all artists do art, but some art is kind of not needed to be tainted by mainstream or whatever. I think that when you're making music, it has its different demographics for it. And so you could either get, you gotta understand what's good for your spirit outside of what's good for your um, bank account. Wow. I wonder, that's what I'm gonna say to you. So I had to realize at an early, early age or in this game, that like he's like, do I really wanna go through everything that it comes with having a number one song every single summer? But you that was just about to ask you that though, cause it's like, when your song did the first blow up, mm -hmm. remember about the first two Halloweens after that? Yeah. All the kids dressed up as trendy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like that song had a long, long run. legs, man. Long life, as they like say. The like they ran. Yeah. Like, on, on, like, I mean, Justin Timberlake did it on Saturday Night Live. When I saw yeah. that, or yeah, one of those times, I was like, when I saw that, I was like, okay, you got to understand, I'm coming out of the real Atlanta streets yeah. with not a background in music. Yeah. I like my background is the streets and being an immigrant. Yeah. So for me, it's different. It's like, you have to get out of that, I can't speak for anybody else. For me, I had to get out of that phase of not deserving it, feeling like I didn't deserve it, mm. or wondering if I deserved it. That imposter syndrome. That, that, that imposter syndrome, or just wondering. Like when you don't have no background in uh, that type of success in your whole family, and you're the first of the generation, you're the first of your kind, um, in your own family, you know, you, you, you gonna wonder. Did it's that human. come from like the blogs and the media though? In like what was aspect? That, what come what? Like you thinking that you ain't deserve it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Feeling like that. Or feeling I, like I, what you were the other. I think that part of it would, you know, but I think also the reaction of the people around you um, that's closest to you that you know. Mm -hmm. Also, when you start to see those people change or people change for the good and the worse, uh, you start to realize you you start to realize you're doing something that matters. Gosh. You know, but if you don't know what you're doing just as yet, you're trying to understand like what matters. Uh -huh. Is it the moment? Is it me? Is it the music? Is it the money? Is it the jury? Like, what is it? You know what I'm saying? So that's what I had to wrap my head around uh -huh. in the beginning of the song. I was like, what is actually mattering right now? 
Mm -hmm. Bro, you dealt with the criticism better than any entertainer we done seen in the, in the industry. Hold on, before People we get on there and say what well, all kind of crazy shit about you, and I see you respond, you like, well, shit, I don't give a fuck, I'm straight. Like, be cool, man. He get the criticism, but I don't think you be getting the applause. Like, if we just talking about, if we talking about this first thing you had, yeah. all go, everything, that shit encapsulated what the club scene was like at it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't think people realize yeah. that shit. Like, it's that a, was, you gotta think about it, because well, I'm giving up. you the perspective Man, of a person, every, not yeah. a rapper going out, Dog, a person yeah. going out. MJQ, all these spot, all these clubs, like, it gave you the vibe of the after hours. And he was telling after you that was this motherfucker is geeked up on Molly. Everybody yeah. feeling they motherfucking mm -hmm. self, nigga. That's like, why we did our 10 year anniversary concert at MJQ. Oh, Big Ten, baby, Big Ten, Big Ten, man. Yeah, a lot of motherfuckers tried to write you off in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Saying that you I want to get a whole ball, ball like to you, bro. Yeah. And all that the shit. thing that I understand now, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be honest with y'all, like, that was my the knowledge one. at... 10 years, of, and 10 years is not a lot in this game, but it's enough for me, the way that I paid attention to it, to just understand why people say the things that they say. The truth of it is kind of what you got to keep to yourself to know to, to not let that shit matter. How whatever is like, damn, is that shit true? Do I actually, did I actually take this look from Martin? When I really, when I realized that the things that people was like <laughs> going viral off of wasn't actually true, and that shit don't really make no difference unless I really entertain it. Yeah, I was like, oh, nigga, y'all yeah, trip. I was like, you can't beat me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you can't beat me. Fuck you, talking about. Like, you might get me down today because I'm human and I can't be goddamn 1,000 confidence every right. single day. Right. Or whatever, but nigga, I'm, this too will pass, like they say in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? So but, I'm I mean, worried. it definitely passed, and I think it gave more. <laughs> Amen. More light to the shit. Like, right. Every time you know a nigga see like, me on a big platform like this one right here, how whatever, at this point in time, I feel like they just wonder, like, damn. What that nigga got going on now? What the fuck? Like, yeah. I keep writing this nigga off, and he keep writing himself <laughs> back on. How whatever, like, you, know, you don't control my narrative. You just control your perspective of the, the art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did it make it? What's the nail? So these were dedicated to uh, my first album, I'll Go Everything. So I say, uh, Don't Believe Me, Just Watch. And then um, Dad for the Pinky. I did the Gold Chains, obviously, for the Gold Chains. That's the dollar sign, just I always do for my James. This is my Saucony sneaker, my first sneaker. And then this is me, yeah, old character. Wow. Yeah, I mean, my whole body is art. I look at tattooing as art. I don't look at it as like, oh, a job. It's like when you do it well, I don't look at my nail text. Like, this is a black lady from Atlanta named Dasa Effects. How much she text you? Uh, these are, these, uh, you know, she could, she could be up there. These a lot. It's a lot. I just add, I know how much the jail nails be for the, like, women. <laughs> yeah, I got that on my shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. You know they, what I mean? They be asking <laughs> yeah. you twice when you ask for the, you sure you want jail? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they pull that, that, that laminated sheet out, it's 20 yeah. extra. Yeah. Like, yeah, so I want that's that. why I just, mm -hmm. I see how you looking at me, low. That's why I was asking. That's yeah, it. Not I just got regular fingers and shit. <laughs> I got regular fingers. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Ain't nothing on my fingers but pussy and me. <laughs> oh I got combs in the cuticles, nigga. <laughs> Hang nails. Regular shit, you know what I'm saying? You said, don't believe me, just watch. Mm hmm. How does that look? Don't believe me, just watch, bro. It is like, a, we gonna be all right. It's a, it's a Negro spiritual. Nigga, I was I'm about, just about to say that. Because yeah. when you said nigga, 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 I feel like you unlocked all the powers of the runaway slaves or some shit. I didn't. But, I ain't also, never music heard shit, your shit music, your music nerd. Well, yeah. all your kind of music guy. <laughs> uh, or whatever. Uh, dilated Peoples or Tribe or one of them had a song that had a nigga, nigga, nigga part in yeah. it. Or whatever, back in the day before me. I didn't ever. I never, yeah, I never heard it. I never heard it until oh, like, one of my happens. old heads yeah. had came up to me and was like, hey, man. You did this because of what to call it? I was like, man, I never even heard that song. I felt bad I'd never heard of this song or whatever. But, you know, once again, these things are just in our culture. If you go and look at old uh, uh, Pimp C, he was saying, or old Noriega, he was saying slime. The word, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. 15 Three, six, years Mafia ago. was saying clout yeah. in the yeah. 90s, you know what, you know what like, I mean? All of it is nothing is, you know, now nah said that nothing's new under the sun, yeah. you know what I mean? Everything's be been done. Huh? <laughs> Cause you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That's crazy. Twerking ain't have shit to do with dancing. Yeah. Gee, yeah. I'm gonna make it twerk. 
something. I'm going to twerk something. I'm going to twerk something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wasn't talking about pussy. <laughs> you can't say yeah. that shit now. I know. Right? Yeah. So, it means I'm going to go juice. I'm going to go get it in. Nigga got to say nothing but the twerk. Nigga got to say pause now. I'm going to go twerk. But that's... That- Twenty dollars in your face. Yeah. I ain't know it was letters. I thought you were supposed to say it. I said, "Are you legit?" <laughs> it's fine if you're legit. What the eighty-five South Show? Yeah. Every time they hear, and when they ain't here, I tell too. Yeah, you speaking in the mic. You ain't got to scream. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> People like to brag. If you ever see a motherfucker slick brag, throw some shit in there that ain't got to be in there. My homeboy told me the other day I got my house built from the ground up. I'm like, everybody shit from the ground up. What the fuck are you talking about, nigga? Just say you got your house built and get the fuck on. It's just a wonderful display of all the talent we've got here in Atlanta. It just can't be beat. God is good. He talking about hell, yeah. Thing like that, you know, on that song specifically, just that one. You was it was you was rapping, but it was like you was preaching on that motherfucker. Like it was just well, we were the way you were saying what you were saying. It was so easy to follow, and it was like you was painting a picture for anybody who hadn't been to Atlanta, even if you didn't see the visual. Because when the visual came out, it took it to another level. But if you never been to Atlanta and you hear that song, you like nigga, where is That's these a hell places? Of an intro. Yeah, uh-huh. this ain't for no fuck niggas. You a real nigga. Dude. Then fuck with me. Straight I, up. I'm doing the Lord's work. When Come I look on. at it. Come on, man. <laughs> dog, he was, he, he, was dog, you was, work. it's like this nigga was in the club and he saw every, everybody he shot out on that shit. Spam, who would be man. the fuck? Yeah, I'm all that shit. That, yeah. I mean, all the way. And, and that's when Instagram to, first started. When it first started. Yeah. Yeah. To even have a perspective, let, let's, let's break down the song a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck nigga had just became a word that was really, really cranking in our city, like a fighting word. Yeah. Or whatever. So it was the most disrespectful word. It was the most attention grabbing word. So I was like, you gotta start off the project with that. Because that's our culture. Mind you, I'm not coming to this as a rapper because my background is not being a rapper. My background is being a stylist and a human and a fashion nigga and a street nigga and a selling weed and selling molly, like hustler. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how rappers think. I don't even give a fuck. I dress better than them in my head what? 15 years ago. You know what right. I'm saying? Like in my head, I'm like, nigga ain't see me because also I'm a stylist. I'm styling artists. I'm right. styling Travis Porter and them. I'm styling Scream and DJ Holiday. And this coming off the rock star shit. Just way, like, right. you know, this is, you know what I'm saying? Way, like, way before. Stupid, fruity you know swag. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that stupid remember, fruity swag. I remember the same dude, um, Jay Money, being yeah. one of the clients that came down to our store and shit like that. Yeah. He, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, it's kind of like taking it so like, boom, fuck nigga. Strongest word, <laughs> most disrespectful word in our culture. Start there. You know what I'm saying? Then... I worked at a Waffle House that's right by Chester Bridge. I went up, so I knew all the strippers and honey. So I learned so much from those girls from working the night shift, being the cook that spoke to them because I cooked their eggs. Come on. I, went, I was like, oh, hold damn. Hold, hold on. on. You, wait, you, wait, 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 wait. Tell wait, them the stripper wait, plate. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. This man be hustling. Wait, wait, wait. wait. The stripper plate. Waffle House cook. Huh? Yeah. See how that nigga teeth used to look, nigga? It went perfect with the Waffle House. 
You know, that, 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 for real, bro. Think about like, it. it looked like he looked when he first came out. He looked like a nigga that would work at the Waffle House. <laughs> <Hey, laughs> <nigga, laughs> <nigga, laughs> and he missing that small tooth, and right there is like a crack. Yeah, chip you know thing. this nigga oh, can rake it. This nigga ain't trying to be crazy. Billy yeah. Hummer man in his mouth. That's man. really what it is. We're not gonna talk about how Waffle House is hibachi. Oh, definitely. <laughs> it is a hibachi for breakfast. You just nigga just turned his back to you. Yeah. And I they prefer the grill on this side. I prefer it. Right. I don't want to look at you while you make my food. Yeah. yeah. He just I don't do no tricks. I don't want to smell. No He's tricks. doing the Lord's work. What? But yes, oh, man. So yes, you know what I'm saying? One more time, what the stripper plate is for so, all the people at home. For anybody that didn't hear, the stripper plate, and it might have changed because girls have, it's a nuance, and girls have elevated. Well, these bitches eat crab legs every day. Yeah, I'm about to say, you know, so they get off work at 4 or 5 in the morning eating that type of lamb chops. They eat juicy crab. Yeah. And, yeah, and, like, and we, Jesus fingers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point right there. When did all the lambs become available no to the black community? I grew up my whole life never seeing nobody eat lamb. Now all of a sudden, nigga, they got lamb lollipop. Pop chops and yeah. Yeah. nigga, where the yeah. fuck did the lambs come? When did they migrate to the Negro community, bro? What year was that? The ate up all the crab legs. Oh yeah, they yeah, disappeared. They, it's they a big crab, crab legs is gone. They go, yeah, nigga. Crabs had like a motherfucker. They ain't even show up. Crabs, crabs like, oh, I heard about nigga. how good juicy crab is. That's Somebody crazy. crab spot is about to feel. I ain't know about lamb chops for COVID hit. When COVID hit, that's yeah, when everybody niggas yeah, they, COVID them lamb chop. all new animals they into the- They got them at brunch and all. Into the lamb chop, plan, lamb chop and pancakes. Niggas is just into them now. Yeah, yeah, lamb chops work. and waffles, well, lamb chops that. and everything. <laughs> you know, we get shit slow. People fault. It's racism's fault. Think of how much delicious shit we ain't even had yet. Oh yeah, that's real. That's I'm real. talking about shit that we ain't even got a hold of yet. Well, the hood grocery, what grocery store? Well, a lot of times. Like Point the niggas well, learn how yeah. to really cook. Escargot, real. escargot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like, well, his well, escargot for breakfast. Time. See, this nigga is well, in the season. When you figure how to cook crab real, niggas gonna stop making roast. <laughs> <laughs> That's we just ain't never seen a prime rib done. Yeah, they always look like that niggas is that savage. You gotta eat a prime rib, man. That bit be ain't no telling what else. White man pink in the middle, like. Ugh. But you know, I gotta say this: the garnish, like the the ultimate compliment on the video, was you holding the puppet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the hand movements too, nigga. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was player, man. That my question to you is: being from Atlanta, like you said, from the from the streets of the perspective that you had coming into the game, what was your reception like? for the people that knew you prior to you blowing up? Um, it was, it was interesting. Like the nigga used to sell weed and molly too when they see you oh, blew up. Like goodness. That. I mean, well, you see, the beautiful thing is that no matter what <laughs> What level, your plug say? Whatever media, whatever. <laughs> 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 That nigga just lost his job. Uh, but it was a blessing, bro. Me being able, I love answering these questions now because I just understand everything. Because I never fucked nobody over, it was like they was happy as hell because I was somebody that was in their circle and we was all flipping money between each other. It's like a shit, it's like, I make money off of selling all these shoes and all this money and then I buy weed from you and then you do, 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 do. You know what I'm saying? It's like whatever you needed, we had a, a community. Ponzi scheme. I was a, I was a big shit. part of this community yeah. where well, I already felt me. cool. Yeah. I didn't do music Street to be cool. Yeah. I did music to take care of my mama and be Inco able to own my own business and stop having to work for somebody. Mm. I didn't do music to be famous or I was already cool in the coolest city in the world, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I, well, like my version of cool, like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, well, you're not a Gucci man, T.I.G.'s, but there's so many levels to cool in this city once mm -hmm. you really establish what your worth is and your intention, how whatever that I had made a name for myself from a fashion standpoint, providing the drip to so many people, how whatever. And if I wasn't doing music, I probably had one of the best sneaker stores in Atlanta, Georgia, because that's the only thing I would have to focus on. Here's the thing that I already was becoming a big, huge, asset for the city. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's bigger than the, my partners. So going back to your question or whatever, like the people around me, they were just happy because they knew that I was a person that was like, 
he gonna he, he deserve it right. or whatever. I didn't even know he was doing music, but he ain't a bad person. So the blessing was just something they was all thankful for. That's, That's beautiful. Real. That's beautiful. That's real. Because you got so many artists in Atlanta. You got so many people who rap in Atlanta that's been doing it for so long that never got anywhere near close to having a even a local hit for something that go worldwide like global. that. Like that's that right. probably can breed a lot of, you know, envy oh, you yeah. know, from people. So for you to not have that experience is a blessing. I think that that's one of the greatest things talking to y'all now, ten, being at an official 10 years, is that over these 10 years, he's whatever, 365,000 days, whatever that is, um, or 36,000 days maybe. Um, the people who started off jealous in the first five, however, I stayed so consistent that we cool. Or whatever, I've looked at my, I've been able to even make my enemies get closer to me. Right. Mm. Damn near, or whatever, where it's like, you're not, a, you're not an enemy because you realize, like, damn, I'm, you, you're just missing, love. yeah, you're yeah. misinformed yeah, about what you love. thought I was gonna do. You thought I was gonna take my fame and shit on you. Right. I never shit on you. I just really stayed focused on me, which I didn't, left me no time for you. That don't mean I shitted on you. I just don't have no time for you. Right. Because I need to focus on me in order to take care of what actually matters. The thing that we got into this trap for, to take care of our families. Right. I'm still in the trap. It's just a better looking one. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. That's, That's, That's real. real shit. Right. That's some quotes, boy. Yeah. If you good in this city and you do good business, yeah, like you said, people fuck with you. Yeah. Off the comedy shit, we done seen that shit firsthand. Yeah. Like, Think of people like my boy Ticket Jerry. Like situation. my boy Ticket Jerry. He good. The first tickets, the, the first Hawks game I ever went to is because I gave him some jeans from my store for the tickets. You know what I'm yeah. saying? My first car I ever got was Ticket Jerry and I crashed it. His yeah. brand new fast ass <laughs> Challenger. He had like a 325, the Bumblebee edition, one of them Challengers, 392. Yeah. How would I have? I crashed it to Kroger parking lot right here on West End <laughs> into a parked car. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, it's all good. I would have, you know what I'm saying? And when he got another car. That's crazy. Because, that you know what I'm saying? Like, the Atlanta he was just system is crazy. He knew like, that I, was, I could take care of him. I could pay can, him back anything. What you can bother in Atlanta is is probably different than any other city in the world. Like, <laughs> they go to these big jeans. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You probably can just trade off some shit in Atlanta. You can't trade off nothing. Just because of the shit that's available in this city. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you fuck around and just, hey, man, look, bitch, I, you give me a lap dance. I, you know, bro, but Ticket <laughs> Jerry, I see you to the nail go lane. Any right. city, Ticket oh, yeah. Jerry be close yeah. in any city. Yeah. Like this nigga, damn, they be on the court. Like players got to dribble around that nigga. Who was that? Ticket, ticket Jerry, Jerry, who he say he got the ticket. Yeah. Anything, yeah. Super Bowl, he the best ticket World Series, in ten years, he's the best. I'm talking about niggas get your tickets while the shit going on. I had just got my mom some Mary J. Blige this, tickets this from that nigga. Mind blowing to me, Ticket Jerry. That's They know him. You gotta know him. <laughs> when you get there, it's gonna be some more people like, oh, you fuck with Ticket Jerry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if Ticket Jerry ever know. got us some tickets to our shit. Bro, bro, hell yeah. <laughs> the bigger you get, Why would the bigger you get, <laughs> Ticket Jerry gonna get the tickets to your shit. Yeah. God damn, yeah, Ticket right. Jerry. Man, he already got the sweets for the show he coming up. Man. Come on, man. No matter what the fuck it is. Guarantee, he's never failed me. Man, he never failed hey. my family. He's never failed my family's friends. Never failed. Not one time failed. Thousand percent. You know how many times I've been to? I never heard a negative Yelp review about this nigga. Never. Never. Like, you ain't never heard nothing about that. That fuck is Chico. No, not that. Tickets. Right. That nigga get tickets to anything. <laughs> anything. Anything. Disney on the, ice. He gonna get you to everything. Whitney Houston funeral. He 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 got yeah. She yeah. gonna hit me like, just go up to the game. It's gonna be an old man sitting on the bench. When he get up off the bench, the ticket gonna be under the bench, under your shit. It's yours. That's like Damn. That. Ticket Jerry. This nigga's the wizard of tickets. Bro, man. Yes. Fuck Oz. This nigga's the wizard. Is it only in Atlanta? No. Everywhere. Oh, anywhere. It could be Drake in London at the O2 Arena. What? Call him. Tell hey, him. two hours before. What? Jerry, I lost Chico. my tickets. I need more tickets. Chico, Got the, him. the best time to follow Ticket Jerry is doing Valentine's Day. The goddamn extravagance. The nigga take his girl to Greece one day. They back in Atlanta courtside at a game. Like he do shit like that. So the women following him. So the women showing what, what, you what, what this nigga doing. What are you talking? We talking about tick. He oh, doing all 
all this shit. He, he just, it just not a guy. Chick- he done brought some shit in there because if you listen to him, you're gonna be feeling the type of way because Jerry take care of his woman so good. <laughs> your woman gonna be like, so what you doing, Chico? Not, not a motherfucking thing. Take this part out. Take this part out. My girl don't need to be following. You need to be trying to get in contact with her like I'm trying to get in contact with this nigga. Oh, stop it. Stop trying to act like you aren't great guys. Oh, I'm definitely a great guy, but I ain't taking yeah, Jerry going yeah, yeah, the way y'all niggas talking about. Oh, yeah. But taking Jerry help you get there. Oh, yeah, I need to. Because you get them tickets to the Beyonce concert. He got the blueprint. That's what I'm trying to right. Hey, guess what? January the 27th, I will be in Phoenix, Arizona. That's right, buddy, at the Celebrity Theater. It's going down January the 27th in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, yeah. It's 8 o'clock. Black people time. Hey, what's up, it's your man Carlos Miller. It's a new year, so hopefully you're not going out like the old you. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. So if you could benefit from some extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The best part, it's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepare and ship direct to your door in a discreet package. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information, and we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code 85SOUTH at checkout and just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code 85SOUTH, and get your first month free. That's BlueChew.com, and go get you some. You them is BlueChew.com. And go get you some. I ain't bullshitting. I'm telling you. It's it's like that. I'm trying to get to it. I'm trying to do some business with your ticket, Jerry. It's some shit I want to see. I want to see Taylor Swift, (laughs) nigga. Something that I would never get a ticket to. I'm I'm going to try to get a ticket. Oh, you a Swifty. I'm going to be one if I can get a ticket. Man, that that nigga might have you introducing her. That nigga so goddamn cold (laughs) with the ticket shit. Damn. He had a backstage pass. She back there with her mama and them. Chill, oh, man. smoking hookah. Yeah. Damn. Drinking Jack Daniels lemonade. <laughs> you know it's Jack Daniels lemonade. <laughs> Chico, guess what, it, guess what his Instagram name is? Ticket Jerry? <laughs> Nigga, you know. Come on. <laughs> this, is best, this is the best promo of the whole series. Thanks. Yeah, man, I'm on the All we need is a ticket. He has a, chain. <laughs> he has a real chain from Icebox. Chains. Say, take a jam. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? You got a commercial on the radio? Bro. <laughs> America's man. finest, Atlanta's best. Right. Uh, nigga, man. don't miss, man. He used to have a little shit down the bucket here, right? Then they had a little. Take it, you get that nigga in here. Take it, y'all chat him on the couch. Yeah, we should. Get on legend. He'll get on legend. Yeah, definitely. Come on, get on legend. Yeah. 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 He gonna tell you some shit because he's been to everybody's show. That's what I'm saying. He, gonna, he know what's up. But that's exactly how you get in the trap with the ghetto legends, bro. Another ghetto legend has the suggestion. Oh, it's a, it's a, it. oh, you can't call like yeah, that. You gotta, yeah, this yeah. is all about yeah. skill. Yeah. This is yeah. all about skill. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. You gotta get this, 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 you gotta this, 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 we got mohos in Soho. Mohos in Soho. Hey, we got mohos in Soho. Man, I'm telling you. Look, Chico, you see what's going on? If a bitch on? don't want to go, I'm nah, my, t- my ain't got no service. It t- T-I-C-K-E-T. You know how to spell oh. it. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm never. Ticket, I'm you can spell it. I've been here ticket for underscore Jared. Jerry. Huh? No, it's just Ticket. Yeah, it might it's be. got an underscore? It might be an underscore. Because oh, you're not verified. Underscore. All right. Yeah. He should be verified. He oh, verified yeah. in the hood. You need to deal with StubHub. Man, what you talking about? I'm sorry, I don't know. Hey, 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 However you get your tickets, feel free to get them. Going back to the music shit, what does it feel like when somebody come through and want to sample your work and then that shit turn into it? Super, super, mega, super song. And, and we heard the Bruno Mars. We heard 
Right. We heard that they had to. So it's it's beautiful now. Big bag. Beautiful now. Okay. The, the way that the bag works is the business that I'm happy that I learned. Getting the initial big bag at first, it more tied to my childish ways when it was like, oh damn, I got a lot of money. Cool, how whatever. But I had made more money before that from that, but not overall, over time. You see, money is about making it travel, yeah. not the moment of it. Right. Like mm. if you could, the further you could throw money is the better. Having moment right, money right in the moment is like, yes. What you saying? The oh, further no. you can throw money is the, the longer it's going to last. You know what I'm saying? If you got all of Oh, yeah, I'm letting it simmer. That's real. Because in my mind, it's Randy Moss going to get the money. Yeah. So you it's just got to put it up there. <laughs> yeah, just throw it. And, 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 and stay gonna... consistent and don't look back I would have shown. too much or whatever because you'll miss it. And just keep going. And then when it's time to put your arms out, receive what you deserve. Catch it. Because if you drop it, that's on you. This nigga a philosopher now. Mm -hmm. I ain't know this shit had yeah. turned into financial budget. <laughs> <laughs> this shit started hitting. I was like, what? Yeah, what yeah, is yeah, going? Yeah. This shit gonna pop up with my man Sad Guru. It's yeah. gonna pop up with the little Indian yogi yeah, dude. Because nah, this bro. philosopher cool. Fuck that music, bro. Talk about that money. <laughs> nah, bro, I'm telling you something. Nigga so, said, throw the money. Taking it back to it, taking it back to it, because I don't want to get too lost in translation. The Bruno Mars thing was amazing. But at, at the time that it happened, if I'm being honest with you, it happened when I was at my most depressed state as an um, artist. And actually, I never got depressed until I got into music. Like, like I've never been you depressed. What triggered that in the music industry? Success. Like, you want to be successful, bro. Mm. Like, to take back to your original Rich first question, question right? right? When you asked about, uh, you know, when you get that big success off the top or whatever, wanting to keep up with that or whatever. Bro, I'm an athlete first. I play basketball, ran track, and football, or whatever. Like, I'm a very competitive person because I played all these sports yeah. in high school. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that part of me is like, uh, I want to kill all these niggas, da 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 whatever. I would want to kill it for, like, my brand that I'm building. It ain't even about, like, I'm trying to be a better rapper than Kendrick, or whatever shit. I've already just met this man, and like I was saying to y'all earlier, like, damn, the energy that he showed me 10 years ago, nine years ago when we first met, was where it's like, well, I'm not in competition with you. Actually, I just name-dropped your name in this song, and then that ended up being the remix, The Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe, Trinidad that James, and I was like, oh, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Imagine me and a nigga at a concert, a big concert, I'm kind of like the biggest name, but he is who he is. At that moment, I would ever like, I'm kind of bigger than him, where like the kids are a little bit more ready to see me than him to a certain extent. Now, I don't know weird shit, just like, bro. Because I'm, of the, yeah, yeah. He's the yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I'm a southern nigga, and I'm just giving the culture at that time literally the energy we need. Is like the person, like I, the equip, not the equivalent, but somebody that gives that I think gives the culture the energy that they need right now is like Glorilla. Mm. Like the energy that the culture wants in a party Shout is her girl. song. Love Glow, man, yeah. all the way. I just, you know what I'm saying? Like, they hold a little click. When the man, culture she's... wants something yeah. and you to provide it, they hold on to it. Like I think that young, that young, she got way more songs than the song that's going crazy, or whatever, because I, I like her. But what I like to pay attention and that's why I started start working on my new album here in Atlanta, um, and only working on it really here in Atlanta is because this is the perspective that matter. The reason why you appreciate Algo Everything is because that is the perspective of somebody that is not trying to be famous, but literally like, bro, this was going on for a nigga that's trying to be cool. The level of Atlanta nigga cool, which is like, you know, Atlanta niggas think that we God's gift to earth in this motherfucking <laughs> You got to. Are you kidding me? You got to. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, our descendants are outcasts and this person and that person. You know, so for me, taking it all the way back, you know, all the lessons that I've learned, and, but the lesson taking it back to your question, Questions about the Bruno thing. I was very depressed at the time. So when the initial play came through, I was like, I don't care. Y'all fucking me over anyway. Fuck y'all. I whatever. So it, it wasn't so my fault. To your people or to the to, overall system? To the system. Okay. I whatever. My people brought the play to me. I whatever. Like, hey, bro, Bruno Mars fucking with you. He wants to do something. I'll go everything. I whatever. I felt such a distaste in my mouth towards the game and everybody. And the distaste came. The distaste came because. The difference between the streets and the industry is many of them, but one of the distinct 
differences that I'm gonna touch on right now is that when somebody does something that is legitimately some fuck nigga shit, you cannot really whoop their ass. You could. Without just consequences. Come with a whole, yeah, it just that come with a whole, yeah. That really affects you. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like right. black, you know what I'm saying? It would like greatly ball. affect your bottom line. And I'm speaking yeah. corporate. I ain't even, even, yeah. artists is one thing. I would have, them niggas fight all the time <clears> privately <throat> on some secret circle shit and keep going and just be having beef forever. Like, why are these niggas beefing forever? Because these niggas be fighting at concerts that you don't see or be right. fighting at this and these niggas got to talking fight in the, the bathroom real, in the airport you and you wasn't there. Right. You talking about the real gangsters with the suits and the pins. Yes, the yeah. corporate people or whatever, they will do something that is legitimately disrespectful to your culture, to you as a black man or black woman, to you as an artist, no matter your race, and it is nothing that you can do. And if you come from an environment like I do, or whatever, that is how we were taught to handle certain levels of disrespect. I'm a conversating type of fella. My conversation is pretty damn on point. But there's been things in this game and the way that it's been done where it's like, bro, I don't want to do no talking. I want to put my hand on the face. So you saying they got ass whooping type disrespect that's just the norm around this motherfucker. Yeah. On that level of like, fuck talking. Yeah. Oh yeah, can yeah. you imagine you walk in, you hear yeah. your shit on the Target commercial and you don't have no say so mm -hmm. in nothing? And they were like, thanks for making the song, man. You did us mm -hmm. a solid. Black motherfucker. <laughs> right, that's what you Chicken hear. Chicken outside the door, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you hear, bro. Sheesh, that's God what you hear. damn it. That's what you hear, bro. Damn. <laughs> that's what you hear. Oh. Hey, why don't you use those big lips and eat some of that fruit on there? Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you get this monkey up in there. Hey, get a Kool-Aid packet in here. Oh, we ain't got anything with man. Fiji. Hey, look what I got. You just went platinum. Guess what we giving you? <laughs> A watermelon Kool -Aid cherry Kool-Aid jammer. Cherry Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you guess your, your, your mammy will be really proud of that one, wouldn't she? Yeah. Like, how do you deal with that? Talk, speak to that. Like, how do you get through that? Like, because I think that's what a lot of people who watch this that are on, you know, because we got a lot of people that watch us that uh, don't even know that they on the cusp of becoming right. the most successful that they've ever became in their life. So these are things that we need to get out there like how do you get past that what's the way to navigate past seeing that feeling that and not being able to do nothing how do you walk out of that room and still continue to be whoever you are before you walked in um i think that stan my first thing i would say to you is stan focus on outworking the opinion outworking outworking the room um you gotta understand your advantage your advantage is well my advantage is i'm the culture i'm really outside there advantages they have spent their life learning the business and how to take your culture and um, monetize. monetize it or whatever. So that instead of focusing on the uh, oppression, I think you should focus on the knowledge that you lack. And then that being able to fight it is what allows you to kind of like be in a better position. Now to answer a little bit more detailed into your question, I have been blessed enough to not get that extreme stuff happen directly to me. But micro debt, microaggressions, uh, I think you've heard people say that in the workforce, I feel like those are the things that <clears throat> a lot of the newer people in labels don't realize that they're doing. And the ones that do, older people, they know what they're doing, they don't give a fuck. It's like your parents. Your, your mama, if that's how she cooked this shit, that shit could be nasty as hell. She been cooking it that way for 37 years. Nigga, that's how it's getting cooked. It's the same thing with the older people in the label thing or whatever. It's like, bro, if James Brown took this contract, Trinidad James would take this contract. Right, right. Or whatever. It ain't necessarily uh, personal, my nigga. Right. Or whatever. It's just <laughs> like, it's just the business. And if, this is how we do it. If you never beat me in court to make me change this contract, I'm right. going to keep using this contract, my nigga. Right. You know, um, I think that um, the industry is changing for the better um, because more people of color are coming into it. But even outside of more people of color, it's not about us. We are always going to try and figure out how to be team us, whether it's a clique or all of us. But the newer races of people that are coming in that are understanding that 
these old dinosaur ways are not even appealing to them. So the new white a rs new white CEOs or whatever, like some of these guys now being 10 years in this shit, I met them when they were just a mid-level a r and now they're the like SVP of this record label and shit like that. And you can see when they pull a white man move because they just can't help that they're white. I, I, I hate asking white people to do black shit. It's like, bro, I expect a white person to do white shit because he's white. Right. That's what he knows. When you go, when he goes to his house and lives his lifestyle, and you go to your house and live your lifestyle, it, it's different. Or whatever, like, let's take our families. It's different. So unless you take the actual conscious effort to do your homework on somebody's culture, you will always be butting heads. Or whatever, because I don't want to keep blaming somebody for something that you've been doing for 500 years. Mm. I need more knowledge to beat it. Right. I need to beat it. I need to beat it. I need to, if I don't beat it, I need to make sure that I leave enough things, enough interviews with other brothers and other sisters and other people, whether whoever the race is the person I'm talking to, where it's like, we figured this out because it's people outside of being black that want to beat it, how whatever, and... Oh, hey, what's up? How you doing? It's your man Carlos Miller. Did you know, did you know that January the 28th, I'll be in San Diego at the Balboa Theater? Did you know that? Because it's true. I will be at the Balboa Theater January the 28th in San Diego. So grab those tickets and come on now. Oh, yeah, we'll be at the Balboa Theater. It's going to go crazy. The NFL playoff action continues. We're one step closer to Super Bowl 57. And for the NFL divisional round, check out DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Plus, all new and existing customers can take a shot at an even bigger payout with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Boost your NFL winnings with each leg you add up to 100%. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code 85SOUTH. New customers can bet $5 on the NFL divisional round and get 200 in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code 85SOUTH. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER. 1-800-426-2537 in Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Wyoming. 1-800-NEXT-STEP in Arizona. 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado and New Hampshire. 888-789-7777. Visit http forward slash forward slash ccpg.org slash chat. Connecticut. 1-800-BETS-OFF. Iowa. 1-877-770-STOP. Louisiana. 877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y. Text HOPE NEW YORK. For New York, visit opgr.org, Oregon, call text Tennessee Red Line 1-800-889-9789, Tennessee, or 1-888-532-3500 for Virginia. 21 plus, 18 plus, Wyoming, physically present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Louisiana, West Virginia, Virginia, Wyoming, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Tennessee. Only minimum $5 deposit required eligibility restrictions apply to HTTP, DraftKings.com, Sportsbook for details. See HTTP, <laughs> calling 404 DraftKings.com forward slash Sportsbook for details. I feel like if you don't love black people, you should be getting no money off of them. Like, if you don't love the fuck out of black people, you shouldn't be able to profit. Shit, that's, 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 that's everybody that's being eliminated. No, give a fuck, this yeah. mine. This I mean, mine. I respect okay. it, but you just mine. But think about it like this. If you don't, I'm talking about you got to love. Let's take it to cars. 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 If a white man fix your engine, ain't you going to pay him? I or pay if you fix, well. if you fix a white man's hey, engine, everyone. it's business. Pay everyone, baby. Uh, uh, I, I know, I understand that. Better shit. question though is, do you think like if you want to take it all the way back to white, you know, if you're just speaking white, you black, you should be doing my white. engine. You can't say that. Too. <laughs> I, 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 Okay, so that's what you said. If you fucking got a regulator, that's right. You get a hundred black artists over there. You shouldn't be able to just goddamn go home and be like, listen, we're white over here. You just been making money off black people all day. But that's why I love you because I'm able to profit off of you. And I can show you love as long as the profit mm. margin is there. So nope. you want a nigga to be loved. If I ain't got nothing and you ain't got nothing, then come on, jump in the car. I ain't gonna see you walk down the street. That type of love. No. Uh, so whatever you got a hundred white artists on your black label, how should that you level be? You would never have it. Well, I want that. Well, I'm trying know. to sign as many TikTokers. Hell no. I feel like a nigga like <laughs> Akon. I feel like Akon is like the shower of like, hey, I have That's the Bieber. Yeah. And Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. It's like it's possible. Yeah. But he, he, not, he, he not. Nah, he not. Yeah, but he, yeah, he, 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 he got to fade into the back, oh, like, like on that, I feel like. He's not a, a from, See, a, from the homeland. See, I love that you said that. See, I love that you said that. I'm saying, go ahead. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, I got a point. Okay. You would never see a black man on a country music label and he got a hundred white artists signing the fucked up deals and he getting rich as fuck off of them. Mm. It wouldn't work the same okay. way. Okay, we would do a better deal. We would do a better deal. Right, he deal. wouldn't be yeah. able to be like, yeah. he couldn't goddamn come over to the, like Big be, Red wouldn't be yeah, able to do like, Red. He make all people. his money off of white people music. Then right. he come over here and act like he motherfucking Dr. Dre or shit. Listen here, Toby. And hey, you know what's crazy, though? <laughs> it might be a nigga that did that. They just never let us know who he is. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll never what get I'm to saying. know who You'll he is. You'll never see So you say he... Niggas have done things to other races that they were pissed off about, like when Michael Jackson bought a boy in their catalog. They were friends. Um, what he is had that? the Tells paper. That, that was a that business was. move. But he didn't sell it back to him. He wasn't supposed to. Yeah, I mean, fuck him. Nah, nah, nigga, nah. Nah, I ain't gonna send you back I ain't gonna send you back your jokes, Chico. You say what now? You pawned me your jokes. And you need the money. Man, if I'm the Beatles, fuck them jokes. So you saying Mike <laughs> fucked up for that? Nigga, no, you can have them goddamn jokes, Mike. Why well, no, I'ma buy some of your shit. Mike, 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 can I buy, shit. Mike, can I buy my jokes back? Uh, Mike, Mike, <laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike, hello, Mike. Can you can you give me my We're struggling <laughs> over here? Give me my songs back, Mike. They're, they're, they're telling me they're shit. gonna take one of my books. <laughs> I need at least one right, of my okay, no, nigga. Nah, no, Mike about saying. that shit one too many times. They put that shit on the Nike commercial. He was like, all right. I'm not playing. Stop asking me. I'm not selling you. What is it? Ask Paul McCartney. The lawyers couldn't stop me. Slaughter of them pockets had them tied to a rocket. Hey man, Michael Jackson ain't got to do shit for you. So he no, got hit up a couple ain't times. Ain't no telling where he had Mike fucked up. The girl nah, is nah, mine. Nah, 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 nah. The girl is mine. Points like that are points that are Probably stand some heavy. Chance type Man, shit. You don't know uh, what went on when the the when, car when, when, with the when, like you said. Well, when, when, when they said it might have fell through. Door. Facts, Paul, Paul might have fell through. Paul might have got drunk one night. I'll give you your fucking money when I feel like it. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, no. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. You gotta go a step further because you know Paul said Mike asked him. What's the best way to make money as an artist? And Paul was like, by publishing to other artists. And he went and bought they shit. So he gave him the game, but he ain't mean go buy my, that's what I heard. He ain't buy my shit, nigga. Right. So that's even colder. But Very like, cold. but like for you being in the game 10 years now, that's an eternity for, you know, any artist to do anything. Like how much do you credit the fact that not just the music, but like something that I always looked at you for just because it's some shit I'm into, just the fashion. How much do you credit that in stretching you these 10 years? Um, at least 50%. Image is, image is turning that James superpower. You have to understand your superpower. Just you because, look at some shit and be like, this too far. The dress stuff. The dress stuff, like wearing a dress. Yeah, oh, have, like, you wore a dress? Mm-hmm. Um, oh. I've wore, I, I wore. <laughs> 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 That's too far. Uh, I want to call it is I know I understand the fashion perspective of it because mind you, I'm really the person that I don't judge nobody. That's why you'll see gays at my show, you'll see whites, you'll see you, but you're gonna see the most left of center people at the Trinidad James show. Yeah. Or the most left of center fans of music, they turn that James fans. How whatever. Why is that? I don't ask God that question no more. I just cultivate these niggas and just want to build things to build communities and build metaverses and build things to cultivate all these left to center people that my frequency speaks to them. My confidence speaks to them. Mm. It, it, I, I, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, I forgot what your question was. Oh, the, the fashion. How the much fa is the fashion? The fashion? But yes, like, you know, image, image is everything. Image, image is everything, man. You know, um, that's that's my I started as a stylist before a musician. Right. I started in fashion before I ever picked up a mic. So image is all, I always felt that I had image handled because artists were coming to me to dress them before I ever did music. Who's some of your fashion influence? I just was about to ask Come that. On, I gotta man. get it. Spill the beans. I gotta um, get it. So, of course, Andre 3000. 3000. James Brown. Okay. Lil okay. Richard. Yeah. Prince. Yeah. Um, Escarita. 
If you don't know Escarita, Escarita, Little Richard kind of got his swag from Escarita. Escarita, yeah, I know Escarita. Back in the day, yeah. Really My cool. grandfather played for Little Richard's band. He played the horn in Little Richard's band, yeah. Uh, Clifford, Clifford Burks, yeah, that's my grandfather. Man, I don't think I heard this before. Yeah, that's yeah. New shit. Yeah, no, nah, that's Y'all my, welcome. my grandfather. Y'all welcome. I'm putting, yeah, that, I'm putting the question there. Clifford yeah. Burks, yeah, my granddaddy. He played said he turned me into a real hey. name. Hey. 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 Welcome back to the 85 yeah. South Show. Hey, hey. hey. Yeah, just found out that Chico granddaddy was that nigga back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Real dead old lady. But those people, those people in some shape or way, um, my older brother, um, his name is Sol- Solomon. Um, he was one when we didn't grow up together. I got a lot of brothers and sisters because my pops was he was oh, a roller. So. He was a roller, and. Um, we didn't grow up together, so even though I have so many brothers and sisters, I grew up by myself. So I'm a very like selfish person. And um, <laughs> when I met my brother for the first time, as an, as like a little bit older, I was a teenager. He was a little older. He was older than me. However, he was, he's a New Yorker. I was like, damn, this nigga got more jeans than I got clothes. Like just jeans. However, and like. When I left, I went to visit him for the first time. When I left there, I didn't see him again for years. But in my mind, I was like, okay, I got something to live up to. How whatever type situation. Um, the way that my parents treated me because I came over here as an immigrant. I wasn't born in Atlanta, unfortunately. But I love being a Trinidadian, um, proud Trinidadian. Um, Atlanta molded me as a as a you know a child and an adult. The island fuck with you too, huh? Oh yeah, I mean, I, you know, I got yeah. a whole island behind my So you so you you, you, you been going back and forth, right? They should have took you through Trinidad if they didn't. Uh, they should have uh, took you through Trinidad uh, if they take yeah. you through when you went through the city, yeah. man. That's now, love. I, I love DC because the Caribbean demographic there is amazing to me, bro. All the way. Uh, it's really really good. Like if anybody that's watching this right now, which is probably millions of people, because we're going viral for something. Um, DC's uh, Caribbean culture, not just Trinidadian, even though Trinis are the best, um, <laughs> is amazing. Hey man, why y'all, y'all don't fuck with Tobago, man? Oh, nobody said that. Um, but literally, <laughs> y'all don't never these, say. These y'all don't. Are, <laughs> this is the last. So literally, nobody, nobody said. Nobody ever that. said that Tobago, though. These these <laughs> shoes, my my sneaker. These are um, the Maxi Taxis because, and they're discolored because in Tobago, okay. they're, they're the blue Maxi Taxis. Okay. All, only in Tobago you can get a blue maxi taxi. So I dedicated what is this a shoe. maxi taxi. So a maxi taxi is our form of transportation. Oh, okay. Or whatever. Our form of transportation is like I a was trying to taxi. pretend like I knew. Mm-hmm. And y'all was acting like y'all knew. Too. I, I'm going to do that. Uh, yeah, I just I'm going to show you. Yeah, taxis. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I didn't. I thought, was, okay, yeah, 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 man. I got yeah. you soon. But, but yeah, right. so now, but, um, but you are right, though. Tobago does not come out people's mouths when they say Trinidad as often as it should. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just didn't do it. What they, Tobago? Tabagonian. 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 This shit going crazy. Yeah. It is historic all the way. But yeah, man. man shout I, out to Tabagonians. Yeah. All of that. That sounds like a spell. Hey, Trinidad, I'm probably going to the So the, 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 the contract with Bruno, that was straight, though. Yeah, so okay. Bruno, Bruno did great business. Okay, yeah. I we just had. was, sometimes you? your attitude can block a blessing. Mm. Mm. And luckily, I was able to get out of my funk before that's the, crazy. That's, that's right. ironic as fuck. Right. Funk you up. <laughs> funk you all right. That's I'm crazy. <laughs> hey man, you don't even know you be doing this yeah. shit. Hey man. I'm just a vessel from man, the, the hey, great creator. I'm just doing the Lord's work, y'all. Yeah. But um I was able to get out of and as soon as I unfortunately had left out of Atlanta, went to LA to um, shoot some music videos with a guy who um kind of like threw me a bone. Um it, it, my whole everything changed, bro. Everything changed. And I say that to say where it's like, bro, I love Atlanta, but I had to get out of Atlanta in order to really appreciate Atlanta. Mm. Because Atlanta made me who I am as an artist and partially as a man. Um, but who I am to be, that's not Atlanta's decision, it's God's decision. Right. And I think he just had more for me. And sometimes when you got, when the universe has more for you, you gotta go to that medium that helps you get what's more for you. It's no offense or diss to what helped you become a part Person, of you. Oh, I feel the well, same way. You know what way. I'm saying? But Atlanta didn't birth me. Yeah. I wasn't even born here. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, that's why, I, once again, you're gonna hear me keep saying, I really look at these last 10 years, the beginning of it, how I came to do the Lord's work. Timing, messenger, 
what the culture needed, you know what I'm saying? And people still talk about the thing that happened 10 years ago that it still matters. I just did a show in goddamn Jacksonville, North Carolina. That shit was going upside down like the song came out yesterday. Right. You know what I'm saying? Why is that? Because that spiritual hymn it works in this church still. Yeah. They still go by that Bible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like in Atlanta, we get new spiritual hymns every two every weeks. Two weeks. Right. So right. it's like this church is crap low dollar, right. baby. Right. We're turning them in and out. <laughs> <laughs> we got new clients, goddamn. Right. Right. You know? That shit real. Because by the time a song go like global, we already be tired of it in Atlanta. Because exactly. we done heard the shit. Yeah, it like bubble been, up. It, it, yeah, yeah, it worked him yeah. for a year. Yeah. Before. And that's what was your point, because yeah. you did ask a valid question. Boom, he did good business. I was in my feelings, and I got out of my feelings in mm-hmm. time. I whatever. I was able to hit my people like, hey, did we do good business on this? Because I didn't hear the song until I got to LA to shoot a music video, and two things happened the same day. That song dropped, and the song that me and your scooter did was on Grand Theft Auto Five. Mm. Or whatever. I was like, uh, let's go. Yeah, man, like, let's go. Hey, did we do the did we do the business on this? You know what I'm saying? And you know, if I'm being honest with you, to take it back to a lot of things. Uh, people gonna always like, man, that nigga always dropping gems or whatever stuff. But that's just like, bro, so many things that happened to me because I didn't know shit coming into this. I literally didn't know shit. Yeah. When I went to work at the Waffle House, I didn't know shit. I had never stirred eggs or whatever. And I left up out that bitch a super grill master chief in the red shirt. Hey, what's up? It's Carlos Miller. I hope you're having a good day. Try some of these candles from my favorite candle brand, Good Day Sense Candle Company. They are black owned and have lots of different scents to choose from. Use my code L O U S, that's Los, and get 25% off your entire order or offer. Let me see. Oh, yeah, we got scents like vanilla, pineapple sage, which is my favorite, Egyptian amber, all types of freaky shit like black love. You gotta go on there and check them out. So when you see these candles, just know that I'm having a good day. You know, these candles have been approved by everybody that we ever presented them to, from Snoop and even Beyonce posted these on the website. This one right here, I think. So go hit the website and grab you some of these candles. Look, I don't want this to be weird or nothing, but what you doing February the 17th? It's like three days after Valentine's Day. Cause I'm gonna be in North Charleston, South Carolina at the North Charleston Performing Arts Center, baby. That's at eight o'clock p.m. It's going crazy. Carlos Miller is bringing jokes like you've never seen jokes before February the 17th. Here we go. February 3rd through the 5th, 2023, Summit City Comedy Club in Fort Wayne, Indiana. This shit far the fucking way, but I'm still doing them. February 24th through the 26th, I'll be at the Improv in Dania, Florida. Where the fuck is that? I don't know, but I'll be there. March 4th, Variety Playhouse in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh shit, I got some Atlanta shows, nigga. We here, the squad coming out for that one. Two shows at the Variety Playhouse. That sounds like a strip club. They got me working at the strip club? <laughs> fuck it, I'm gonna do it. All right, there we go. All right, last, April 8th. 2023, I will be at the Mirage in Las Vegas. I'm back at the Mirage, man. Sold that bitch out the last time y'all came out. We gonna do it again, the Mirage. I had a suit on and all that, and my shit still was like this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the red shirt. What the fuck is the red shirt? Oh, yeah, that's, that's some, that's some, that's some, that's some, that's some, that's some, that's some back, that's, yeah. yeah. The red shirt on. That's a super grill master, chief master operator. Super, super grill now, chief now master. Now I'm looking for the red shirt. shirt. Oh, that man, why do you say I have it? Because the ones that I might have came in contact with, we like, this nigga on this show, lying his motherfucking ass. Uh-huh. 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 When they came in for that motherfucking show, I was at work. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga, you gonna find out about the person who you ha- have in high regard, you gonna realize that they've been doing him wrong. Right. He just been working there a long time, but he ain't been trying to level up. And that's the difference. Waffle House taught me that. His people who I saw, his certain things, I'm not gonna bring them all up because I'm close with some things. But a lot, one of the biggest lessons I learned from things like the Waffle House, things like working at Ginza, the clothing boutique where I used to work, work at, or whatever, is that people work at something for a long time, but they don't work on leveling up. They work to just work, or whatever. And you can get caught up in this working atmosphere where it's like, bro, is that all you want to be? Trading time for money. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's just literally just a, it's, that's it. I would have, and I just, um, once music showed me that I was worth more, I just been 
digging for that goal. That's the goal I've been digging for. It's like, what, what, what more can I be worth to, the, to my culture? What more can I do that makes something, you know what I'm saying, crazy? You know what I'm saying? What other things does God have in store for me? Because if it wasn't meant for me to be here, how would it still be cranking things out that crush? How would that, whether it's for me or writing a hit for other people? When I, um, random fact, random fact, if somebody ever said to you, hey, bro, you know the white girl, Bad Baby, Catch Me Outside? Trina J wrote her first hit. You'd be like, no way. What's her first platinum hit song that launched her musical career. Oh, that I was a so part of that. I was a part of that. You the one that started. I, 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 man, did, I, you, did you make that white life matter? Did you make that white life matter? Did you make that white life matter? We've been looking for you. You shouldn't have done it. He going to claim that one in the next 10 years. Remember that period, ah, period, uh? That was me too. Stop no. this shit. Turn the I see the pen. He got the pen right at that. What? I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, stop this. Shit. Hey, but nah, oh. shout out to my boy who I, I wrote, uh, wrote that with too. Hey, you know hey, get that check. Get but that. but nah, you know, get and, it. and that's the thing about it is like certain things happen. Um, you know, even when I, but even meeting that young lady at the time, she's so young or whatever, it felt weird to be in the room. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it was just like, bro, talent don't really got no color, bro. It really talent, bro. It's so interesting, bro. Like. The talent that God gave me, he gave me the will to go find the talent. He gave me image. He gave me confidence. The talent, I had to go find that motherfucker, bro, and just dig for it to bring it out because what, all of everything took off, but that's raw. Me and my boy Jose was just listening. I've been, because I, you know, the ten, I was just listening to the first project because we're working on the new project, Don't Be Safe 2, for the new album. And I just listened to it. I'm like, bro, this shit is so unorthodox. The knowledge I have now, I would have never been able to do this this terribly perfect perfect masterpiece right. if I had all the knowledge I have now. Right. You know how Fuck hard it is for me to be like raw right. now? Fuck that knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you just said. Don't change what the fuck got you in there. Right. Right. You be on all right. gold, everything, right. ain't right. a man by now. Right. Hey, that's so right. right. only dope. Everything you can make nigga, some shit. Nigga, walk outside with a new oh. puppet. Hey, everything. Niggas First nigga thought with a I was finished. Nigga go down with just the beginning. <laughs> this shit have never, never ended. Old. Now I'm fucking with the Frenchies. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, that is real though. Jeez, now, now you can't go to the Frenchies. That's your heart. That's crazy. That's your heart. But you know, even to any young artist that's watching this, it's like, hey man, if you really do make something that hits our culture like that, bro, you really can make 20 of them. Don't think that you can't. I saw a nobody, clip. Nobody, nobody never said this song. Huh? Man. Say it again. I saw a clip. You say you hate this song. Man. Hate what? The, the song? song? The all everything? Yeah. I don't hate the song. I hate, and I want. This is the I'm gonna devil's advocate for you. To a young person watching, if you make something like all go everything and you you catch a wave, do not let anybody tell you to not make ten of those. Make ten. Make ten. Mm. Now to play devil's advocate. The reason why I did not make 10 is because those people limit our culture. They, cap, they keep our culture locked in a certain place because they make us feel like that is the biggest version of us. And I knew that I was bigger than the nigga that they perceived, uh -huh. that they wanted to make this. Like, it's a lot of characters to Trinidad James. But if this nigga is the nigga that you want to make the face of our culture, nah. Yeah. I didn't go for that. Right. And so that was a personal decision that you got to be able to fit my size 11 to order to handle that. Because most niggas would have took the money and made 10 to 89 more all go everything. Back to Come back on, to back. nigga. You wear the same right. size shoe up. Oh, nigga. Yeah. 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 And dog, even you know, when you first came bottle. out, you were telling people, like, listen to the whole album. Like, you kept telling people when you... Because that's they, important that's to me. How, yeah, I know that yeah. it's more to me than yeah. this thing right. that you are goddamn doing backflips about in the middle of the goddamn Central Station. How whatever I do appreciate this love because love is love. You know how long you go as a black man not getting no love? You know how long you go as a black woman not getting no love? Oh, you know how you go as long they you go... put the sad music behind this one. Yeah. Oh, man. It needs to I, go. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> the angel. Adopt the black person. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have people need love, I don't feel bad about saying black when I'm saying about this because, bro, that shit really is tough, bro. Yeah. On us, bro. You know what I'm saying? I know that it's tough on humans. I know that it's tough on every human. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would not like to be a woman in the Middle East. They just got their license, uh, uh, the eligibility to get their license like three years ago. Oh, you know how crazy that is? 
I would ever like to be a whole woman. Yeah, Lowe's and, told me about being over there. That shit sounds scary. You know what I'm saying? It's like, there. damn. You know, so it's everybody's going through their own version. You know, I've, go, I, I've traveled a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I've always, I always dive in the culture when I travel as much as I can. I go do my show. I go make my bag. But you see me in three o'clock in the morning and some hole in the wall or some boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I'm just the same like, way. Damn. Oh, like, what is this about? I think that's how you get in touch with, you know, the people. And really, I, I, that's the way I realized. Just within the, you know, United States, I realized that, you know, in doing that same thing, that this shit is the same everywhere where we are. Me personally, I wish I went viral as a comedian compared to artists. I wish I was uh, doing all of everything as like a new joke skit and then that went viral, and then I would've started doing com being a comedian. Because I feel being a comedian is the last art form where you can tap into culture and literally be a 100% transparent version of the jokes that you're saying in the barbershop. It literally can be the jokes you're saying on stage. But at the same time, one of the benefits of doing it your way, in 20 years, nigga, you gonna be on one of them lineups, performing all go everything, getting the bag, but we can't come do the jokes we did yesterday. You don't want this shit. But you can do a reunion tour. I, but you like, don't want to say the same it. shit that you said the last time they saw you. You can't oh, do that. okay. Oh, you actually, we phone. jokes don't hit the... Okay, no, nah, okay, when they heard okay. it, they like, what's next, nigga? But, but when do you, you think that's true, baby? Because do you think that's actually really true or do you think that like if we go to Kevin Hart's first series and he did like I'm only doing this jokes from this right here that those people won't come out for that? No. For I real? don't not not well yeah. maybe like this is maybe delirious. if you scale it like, down like, like, it do, it's like I'm doing it delirious down, if you scale no. it down one time only if you scale it down maybe once you, and make once it you made thing. a run with that shit and no. that set has gone global and everything then, Andy Murphy could do Delirious I right now. He, he can do theater. pieces Your song of blow up. No, but not when Delirious. When get to the concert, they want to hear a new song Who? that no. they like just as much as your last one. That's true. Every, they ain't never heard show. before. Yeah. They want both, really. They, <laughs> they really they want both. They heard before. They want you to do your old shit, because yeah. you know, you go yeah. up and you give them the new shit. Oh, man, that shit was great. Why you ain't do? But you got another request. And you like, damn. Then you yeah. go up, do your old shit, mm -hmm. then they be like, I heard this shit before. Right. right. So it's, 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 it's what Jay-Z said. Him. You want my old shit? Buy my old album. Man. Right. But it's like, that's the thing about being a comedian, where you go in and like Lo said, they want to hear the new song that they like just as much as the old one, but mm -hmm. they ain't never heard the new song but before. They want they want to make but this new song better be as good as the one I already <laughs> like. Now. like the, yep. Yeah, that's what it is. So and that's what that's I've been studying. That's what I've been studying for the last ten years. It's like okay, not, and not for the last ten. I'm lying. The first five years, I wasn't studying what all everything was doing to our culture. I was studying how to survive in this industry. The I would say the last four years of the ten was when I was like, I'm lying. When I worked at Bruno Mars. That's when I was like, oh shit, I gotta do homework on myself. I would have, because the main thing I learned from working with him was like, damn, this nigga been studying me and I'm not studying me. And this nigga could do me better than me in the moment right now. And you even moved on. And I'm literally right. on you like, under, I'm 3,000. I'm, 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 I'm out here, you know what I'm saying? But I think about artists like 3,000, that's why they just stop. It's like, bro, I'm so far ahead. It's like, he I might, can't do it no more. It's like, it might be a trick. That's how I keep. <laughs> Making myself believe that one day he's just gonna pop out with eight thousand songs. He got a bunch. But will of they songs. hit the same for you though? Yes. <laughs> we take anything. That yeah. We take anything. That's, yeah. that's yeah. how crazy this shit is. That nigga, the, the coldest song. We, we take anything. Just stop rapping at the end. It was like that's all I got. And then the thing in the me is, I like what 3000 is doing, his process of doing it better than Dr. Dre and keep teasing us with this detox mm -hmm. shit that is supposed to have been coming out since I was in 11th grade. Bruh, everybody like, in you the world I mean? that like, was ever cold like, be like, man, I was in the studio with Dre like, last night, like, he man, made we, some of the best like, shit nigga, I ever heard, heard in my I've musical heard career. It. See what I'm saying? Like, I, I, bro, I don't want to, don't keep teasing me with this shit. I was like, a credible person, he's like, bro. You want to hear some shit from the detox? They went to me. It was to another person who was bigger than me. How whatever. So I'm just like now, once again, knowing how to play the position or whatever. I was like, well, I'm going to get out of this conversation. How whatever. So this is a little bit above me right now. How whatever. And I heard songs from the detox. How whatever. And I was like, oh, okay. This is great. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But it's great from the standpoint of like, whenever you get it, it's going to be worth it. 
Man, listen. Because he's just a great musical maker. I understand maker. that, but it's like every time that you get a glimpse, it's like a tease to where you like, okay, I've been hearing this for so long. Yeah. When am I going to get something to be able to satisfy this tease with 3,000? With 3,000, it's you, that nigga, just walk around with a flute. He yeah. don't give you no inclination that he, he even been a little near one a studio. Minute snip. And then that's whenever you hear you. about him and he rap, he rapping. Yeah. It's something that's out. Yes. It's that, yes. it's yes. that yes. Kanye West like verse about his mama. Movie. It's. I went back and listened to all the songs he did for the cartoon. Oh, <laughs> class of 3000? Yeah. Damn. That shit go hard. That's how yeah. much I fuck with that nigga music. Sonny. Come on, man. Man, uh, what you call it, you know, and the beauty, once again, Andre is one of those people who is like, I hold in high regard because of- Have you met him? Oh yeah, what you call it, he came to my trap studio at Metropolitan when I first kicked off. Uh -huh. um, through Erica Badu, she was a big fan, but she was a big fan because he put her on me. Oh, uh, whatever type man. shit, so I was like, damn, what's going right, on right Erica now? Badu like you, you yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's why it's hard for me to be, man. like my life had to change over the 10 years. I had to get used to like, not being the regular fan that was the people and like, okay, now we are companions, now we are business Why people. You, you my OG, you know, we gotta do business. You know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, I come from straight out of the trap, straight out of the streets, or whatever, hand to hand selling kicks, this, that, that, that. They're like, oh damn, I just got paid 100,000 to do a show with Drake, or whatever. I like, this shit gotta be hard because all these badass bitches in here and rich ass niggas in here, they want a show. They just spent all their money because I just made it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And Drake is ready. He's always ready. Right. He's always ready. He's just always ready. Yeah. Two chains. There's Drake. I remember, I will never forget the shows. Houston All Star 2013. I have two shows the same night. I've just made so much money. And it's me, Drake, two chains at one show. Then I have to leave them because I have another show with me, Jeezy, and T.I. Nigga, I just got. Nigga, one I night. just quit my job. Look, I don't want no problems with nobody. But February 19th, I will be in Columbus, Georgia at the Bill Hurd. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's going down at the Bill Hurd in Columbus, Georgia, February 19th. That's 2023, brother. Make sure you get those tickets and make sure you come to the show. I'm coming for the bill. One night. One night, I just quit my job. Wait a minute, hold on, That's time frame, time frame. It's 2013. Okay, no, 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 no time frame. You, you was working. I was Shit. working, I stopped that job like right in January. All-Star February. Nigga, in February? That's basketball, February, All-Star. So you quit the job January, and in February you yeah, did, my, was. The boss was like, the dude was like, hey man, you gotta. Doing uh, two big stupid shows. You can't work anymore, he's like, you can't work anymore. Because it already went crazy because of the video went viral. So we already had everybody call him a phone to sign me, Rick Ross, Diddy, I'm hanging out with Diddy, boom, boom, boom. So it already is lit from a clout thing and, but your money, it money, once again, money is about throwing it as far as you can throw it or whatever. Don't try and get all the money. Like I got all the fame up front, however, but I didn't get all the money up front or whatever. Cool. So that was what was awesome about it. I was like, man, fuck fame or whatever. I was like, do I want to change fame or do I want to see this money yeah. Go long, long or whatever. So I was like, okay, in order to get the money, I, anything I've ever succeeded at, I had to actually do the things. Because I'm a hard worker, I'm a bootstrap type working nigga. Like, I gotta go. I wasn't good at working smarter. Who the fuck is wearing boots with straps on? Come on, man. Shit, Zion. This nigga. No, you said you, <laughs> Zion, <laughs> Zion Williams and his I was getting ready to go down the history yeah. class a little bit. Back in 1970, yeah. like, people actually had these straps. I, got, you I had them? a question for you, though. Speaking <laughs> of boots with straps on them, uh, what's your fashion moment? Like that moment, you spoke about a lot of the musical moments that Erykah Badu's the dude. Yeah. What's that 
that moment where you was in the fashion side of the game where you was like, oh shit, nigga. You like at one of them shows watching them Balenciaga models walk down the aisle crazy. Like what was that moment for you? I think honestly, man, um, it's a brand called B-O-D-E. Some people pronounce it as Bode. Some people say Bode. Bode, yeah, that's what I said. I know what you're talking about. Exactly. Um, The designer is from Georgia or whatever. And uh, I was shopping with her early. I was on the brand early because I'd be outside just seeing shit. So things, clothes be speaking to me. And we got so cool, she invited me to her first runway show in Paris for Men's Fashion Week 2020. Pandemic year, so this is before the pandemic, yeah. January in Paris. Uh, my first time going to Paris just to like kick it. My first time going to Paris was on my birthday, um, 2013. So I came in the game September, and then my birthday, 2013, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to Paris there. for a show. That was a wild year. We was on tour. It was wild, bro. It was wild, you know. But so my next time back in Paris was 2020. So that's seven years later, or whatever, for Fashion Week. Um, her show, big show. She, she like the the little baby of fashion. How whatever. If you compare like the bubbling, like uh, you know what I'm saying. She got goddamn got the, the song. She going. got the energy going. She got the team. How whatever. She got the people vouching for. How whatever. Like Will Welch and Mark Anthony Green. Those are like the heads yeah, of um, yeah. GQ. Yeah. That's like you know I mean, Doug saying like, man, here got the money to get out of the right. to stop trapping, bro, and rap. Right. How whatever. Like the equivalent of that. So like I know that because I care about fashion just as much as music as far as like who popping and like who really the shit. And she invited me to the show, and it was our first show, and it was like, oh, shit. So I go back to Paris, and it's a moment. Right before we go inside, walk around the corner, I get out, I'm fresh as fuck. (laughs) I'm fresh as fuck. I'm talking about, bruh. I'm fresh as fuck. Yeah, I, I, I had that shit on, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just, I, I thought, you yeah, see, going to Paris Fashion Week, I always walk in the shit really humble, where it's like, I really don't think I'm gonna be the freshest nigga in something. I'm really just putting on some clothes, or whatever. Yeah. And when I went to Paris, I was like, man, this, these niggas on this super fashion shit. That's why I, I went a long time not fucking with Fashion Week, because I was like, man, it's just a bunch of niggas who, with their egos, they went to college, they think they're better than me because I didn't go to college, fuck these niggas, or whatever. And then I realized, I was like, oh damn, I dress better than everybody. So coming to Paris, going to that show, coming around the corner, all the cameras stopped at all the like known fashion people who they were on, and was like, who is this person, or whatever getting all their attention and walking and sitting front row and just in that moment I was like damn a nigga really in Paris right now fashion on some fashion shit the you first know time you it really is, in Paris when there's a white bitch behind you with a duck on You're like this bitch <laughs> <laughs> smoking a cigarette this long man long. <laughs> oh man, hell it's yeah! Stupid. And I ask that because you know, just being as into the you know that as much as I as you grow with it, I know that you got to grow with it. It's not something that you could just pick up. Mm-hmm. Like I've been buying my own clothes for so long that I know it's a process. Like this nigga tell you, like I be in the mall, nigga, everywhere. You know what I mean? And I gotta process. I walk around that bitch one full time, right, see, see what I see, yeah. and then yeah. go back and put it, it right all together. Up. It's like, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a process, but I remember the moment for me, one of the moments for me is I come from D.C., we got a lot of local brands that, yeah. you know what I mean, the yeah. madness and the all days and the shooters and all, and when I started getting recognition from those leaders guys. Leaders, too, right? Hmm? Is leaders, am I tripping? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Not yeah, do, it's, it's a bunch I'm of I'm thinking of something, a manger or a court, or, is it manger or court? Museum. Museum. Yeah, okay. the museum. That's my boy. Majors is in DC. You know, you know, you know Majors. Majors. You know Majors. Majors in DC. That's oh, streetwear company. I ain't never. I'm oh, yeah. not hip to Majors. My yeah. bad, Majors. I don't know if y'all knew, but you know what I mean. I know the ones that's from when I was a young man. Oh, y'all not about to sit here and act like Nav don't put that shit on. Oh, Nav put that shit on. It take him a while, but he get it on. <laughs> Nav, you see Nav at the poor man show? I slowed down a little bit. You I slowed down. You see Nav at the poor man show? Oh, I seen Nav. Oh, you with talking the, about the, you with talking the Hawaiian about, Sophie oh, fame shirt on? Hey, yeah. Man, that nigga oh, had the Hawaiian Sophie fame shirt. Yeah, he did. Like that damn jumble. A rumble. Oh, yeah, with yeah, the boots. 
Rumble? Yes, he did. Rumble? Yeah, from, it was a Zara Rumble, too. A Zara Rumble? <laughs> it was from Zara, too. You so sassy, you could, boy. You could, tell, you could tell it was uh, that slightly above H&M quality, oh, but yeah. below, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Trust me, no, Zara's a gem to anybody it's, that want to, you know, ball on the budget. Man, no, they yeah, fucking lying, Zara, man. Zara, Zara got Chuck that shit. It's like, it's, it's, it's right above H&M quality, yeah. but below, like, Sandro Paris and all of those people that hey, give you the real silk and all that shit. He know he had it. Yeah, he had it on, too. Now you calling it bullshit. No socks. Yeah, he had some fucking slides. The slides, the Gucci slides with the... But to take it back to what you're saying, though, Chico, you know, um, I was a black owned business. Fashion and image, man, you know, if I didn't have it, man, I would have been quit music. Like, if I didn't have that to balance it out. Because music business is... They, they, they are not in the game of, it's, it's, it took them a long time to get to where we're at now. It wasn't meant for us to win in it. It was meant for us to survive in it. Yeah. And I'm an immigrant. I've been surviving my whole life. All I know is survival. Mm. So it's like, how long do I got? I got to survive my whole life? When can I get to a place of living? Mm-hmm. When again I get to a place of like being able to just be to to be treated as an actual equal, how whatever it might not be for me. It might not happen because it just might not. But I think that what's been more important is being able to take the time whenever I'm depressed or so just like bro, the, the world and everything that's being against me and get back up, make another project, do new things, do movies make my own sneaker, start a brand, how whatever. But in the midst of it all, be a good person to people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's been the main consistent thing with me is like, no matter what, I've never been bad to nobody. How whatever, I might not have came, couldn't have come through, how whatever. And, but my intention, once you, to me, once your intentions is in the right place, right. then you'll be all right. Yeah, as long as you're not knowingly hurting yourself or nobody yeah. else. Yeah, you're, you're like, come on, man. You come know on, what I'm man. saying? You know, and, and I'm so happy. The happiest thing I'm about, happy I'm about right now, I don't know when this is going to come out, but whenever it does, whenever somebody looks at it, if, this, if my album, Don't Be Safe 2, is out, then know that that music means a lot to me because I had to fight a lot of depression and a lot of personal battles and a lot of self-sabotage to get to that place to be able to write those words. Mm. A lot, a lot, a lot. And that's me in the midst of, you know how conflicting it is and how depressing it is to be able to write a hit song for other people and watch that go viral and you can't write one for yourself? Mm. Or whatever, it's the worst feeling on earth. It literally is. You want to kill yourself. You know what I'm saying? And so like to, whether you hear, well, I don't know when this interview come out, you know, to know that my project, my next project is called Don't Be Safe 2. I'm working on it currently. So if this comes out after the project comes out, um, know that that music, if you chose to listen to it, you know, I wanted you to, and know that it means a lot to me because those words were not easy to write. They were not very, being a lot more vulnerable because it's like all the things I've learned in this game, you know, it's 10 songs, 10 years, one year per song, damn near. It's a lot. It's a lot, bro. You know, um, when you actually really do care about morals and character in a world that is moralist and <laughs> no character, you know, you have to control your narrative at all costs. Yeah. And um, that's not always easy. Um, as as good of a communicator I am, as much as I know and all that, bro, I'm human. Yeah. I'm human as fuck. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that I could tell you that, look, if you see me on the stage performing my new album, I'm bringing that smoke because mm. I'm happy as fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I had to fight day and night to get out of that, that depression, to get out of that self-sabotage. Because when they put you in a chokehold, it puts Man, you in a chokehold, bro. Yeah, yeah. Any features on yeah. there? Huh? Any features on there? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I would have me talking to you now, I haven't locked them all in yet. Okay, but okay, by the okay, time okay. it come out, okay, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it definitely, because Don't Be Safe is not about having the biggest names on it. Mm-hmm. Don't Be Safe is the, the, it's the start. Yeah. I started, but then I know when you say yeah. you're coming out of that depression, you want to make music with people that you, you know, exactly. reach that. So yeah, you'll so. see somebody in there and you be like, well, who's... 
Tony Snow. Yeah. You'd be like, who's that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, who is Bruiser Wolf or who is, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh, you see dangerous than a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Sound <laughs> like a nigga you pick on Street Fighter. <laughs> Bruiser <laughs> Wolf <Yeah>. versus <laughs> right. What medium are you dropping your next project on? So that is what I've been studying the game right now. It's like, damn, should I just drop my album on TikTok? Should I just drop my album on 85 South Channel? Like, what is the deal? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, All right. yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Shit yeah. like that. Yeah. It ain't no right, right, bro. It ain't no. Yeah. For a nigga like me, my whole life was devised to make it, to show a nigga who really don't do shit by the rules that you can be successful and take care of your family doing it however the fuck you want to. Man. Uh, that's the right. whole motto of the 85 South Channel. Come on, man. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, man, whenever goddamn you drop that shit, come back. Come back, man. Listen come back for real, bro. For real. Oh, yeah. For real. For sure. Go to some, uh, song. Get some lemon pepper wings and we'll do an album. Yeah. And all that other yeah. Shit. Because it's no right way, man. It's no right way. And I, I really appreciate everybody here. Shout out to my boy DC, who's not here. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, y'all have been. I, the, the thing that, like, and I'm not a crier because I just, I don't know, my eyes don't do it. But. Um, Damn, nigga. <laughs> you gotta get some more sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Drink some water, my son. Right, right. Yeah, crazy, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think it's on the outro, they can't even cry. <laughs> now I'm trying to see if this nigga blinked the whole time. <laughs> right. the boys, yeah. But, nah, man, you know, the fact that brothers like y'all exist and platforms like this exist, and y'all, I be wondering, I was like, why can these real niggas show me respect, but then other people don't get it? How whatever, and once again, it's that media versus in person. You know, so every chance and every opportunity that I get to push what I got going forward, whether it's my music, my clothing brand, uh, my socks, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever it is, anything, movie, this, that, that. You know, but I truly appreciate it because I'm always studying our culture. And not just our culture. You said something earlier that I want to touch on before we get out of here, um, where it's like, bro, when I went to Africa for the first time this year in 2022, because that's when this is happening for anybody watching, whether it's 2042 when you watch it. No, um, nah, it ain't going to be that late. <laughs> <laughs> no, they niggas still see it. No, I'm saying the oh, person like a, 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 20, a 13-year-old man. in 2042. Yeah, this shit ain't going nowhere. No way. It's, it's yeah, coming out when it's coming yeah, out, but it's going to last. Gonna yeah. Yeah. If you want What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex T. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And I got some really good news for y'all. Yes, period, y'all. We are about to revamp our whole Patreon. Yes. We got so much new shit coming soon for y'all. Like, we about to be doing challenges. We about to be doing vlogs. Mm -hmm. We really about to be dropping a lot of exclusive content for y'all. So, if one episode a week is not enough, y'all about to get some more content on Patreon. Yes, y'all be saying, oh, make the episodes longer. I need twice a week. Well, this is your opportunity to see us twice a week. And also, you kind of get, you're going to get a look into our lives mm -hmm. and know us on a personal level. Mm -hmm. So make sure y'all sign up at patreon.com backslash Poor Minds, sign up today. There's different tiers. So if you want audio only, you can just listen. If you want video and audio, we have that too. And also, we have a top, top tier where you get exclusive access to merch, shows, all that good mm -hmm. stuff. So go to patreon.com backslash Poor Minds and sign up today. Period. Hey. Go about 2022. Think about this. I went to Africa for the first time this year twice. Goodbye. I went to Nigeria to bring in the new year. Okay. Um, Lagos. And then um, in J right before June, I went to Cape Town, South Africa. And, you got a lot um, of love out there. Man, man, bro, Nigeria, first of all, felt like Atlanta and Houston and New York in on steroids. Place. Times 100. Damn. Times 100. Like, smart. Los, we gotta get over there. I see you. I, we gotta get over there. We've been talking look, about this shit for too long. We've been talking about this shit for too long. We gotta get over there, man. Yeah. Everybody yeah. in Africa yeah. said it. I've been saying it. Say, you no, been you said it. Hold up, Chico. I've been saying it. You've been saying it. We've been, been saying it. We Ever since tonight. we started naming countries, you we know what I was saying. I'm dead real. Come on. I've been saying it. 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 And the reason why I bring those places up. And the reason I'm saying to you is because we were talking something about black culture and we, I think we was talking about like if a black person uh, had a label artists, yeah. or a white person, yeah. you know, bro, we, you said something I wish I wanted to stop there, but 
bro. Like really? Not being from America. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I would average like, bro. Black culture is one race. It really is one race. Black Africans. I got to see our culture from three black perspectives. I was born in Trinidad and Tobago, so black Trinidadian and Tobagonian culture, mm -hmm. right? And then I grew up here in Atlanta, real talk. You know what I'm saying? Elementary, middle school, and high school. So Nick can't tell me shit about Atlanta or whatever. Black American culture. <clears throat> and then I went to Africa, and you got to see black culture, which is basically the whole, it's the same thing. I got to see a person in Africa that look, talk, walk, and act just like a nigga in Atlanta and a nigga in Trinidad. Mm. Same features, same disposition, the same laugh, the same teeth, the same smile, the same weird things that we got in our culture. It, it's the same thing, bro. It's we have been taught, whether it's by each other or other cultures, that we are different types of black. It's one black. It's one black. I'm just pointing it out there. It's one black. So everything, that, everything that's happening, it's not because of us, it's because of the separation of us. So when you go a place, do not think that you are less than you right there. And if you go around the, you, are, you know you, 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 know, you know you're gonna be around, around the right Africans when they make you feel that you are just like them. You should not feel less than a black person at any time because all black culture is one culture. I think you get that more if you go over there, because over here everything's jaded because of what the yes. images that they're projected yeah, and all that. This place is based on separation, divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. You gotta get dog. over there, man. America we gotta is take dog a, and dog. Well, I just you hope go. in my life that I can boy, see man. when the black folks oh, finally get together. Yeah. Open the button. We gotta, yeah. get, we gotta go on the boys, yeah. man. We gotta go to Africa, man. They want to see. We're going to Africa. No fucking questions about it. Yeah. No questions. Fuck all that. New World Tour. And new place gonna go. be there to document the whole Let's thing. Go. Just tour Africa. I'm going. Just tour Africa. If y'all want to know, we tour, might be too raw. In some places, they're like, nah, they don't give a fuck. Come, 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 to, to come to me. You are saying too you much about pussy. When you say you eat the pussy, what do you mean? They don't care about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't be afraid. We are not going to do nothing to <laughs> you in front of anybody, but we need to know what you mean they by the pussy. Right. Yeah. yeah, but we gotta get over there, man. I seen their little movies. I they freaky any, too. I advise any black person, oh, if you don't go to Africa, too. you are doing they a disservice to yourself. <laughs> you are doing a disservice to your culture. <laughs> I tell the same thing black people need to come to Atlanta. Oh, I oh. think black people just need to come to Atlanta. Just if you're a black person, you grew up in energy. Wichita, Kansas, and all you know is Wichita, Kansas, then you're doing a disservice to yourself and your black culture not coming to Atlanta. Yeah, because you get to see a success level in Atlanta that Facts. you don't get to see nowhere else. Atlanta's yeah, the even only think city. Atlanta really supposed to exist. I know, right? That's the thing I say about the, just this city in general. Like, this is one of the only places where you can come and become successful and not be a target simply because you're successful, because it's so much black success, where yeah. every other place you go for the most part, if you the nigga with the bread and the big Bentley and the chains and everybody's looking at you. Black success is expected in Atlanta. Yeah. It's expect, in other places I feel like it's battled by the other cultures. Yeah, exactly. Like Houston is close. I would have, mm -hmm. like Houston, is, they're, they're black um, millionaires there, yeah. they crush it, they do their thing. But I do feel that um, Atlanta, black success is just expected. You expect to, to meet a rich black nigga or whatever, or a black woman with her own business going crazy. Or whatever, other places, the, ta the talent is there, the, the money is there. Like, I mean, shit, the DMV. How do you go to certain parts of, of, of DC? Hey, there ain't nothing but rich ass black people over there. Yeah, that's the gentrification. But but they still, they, they still they still they still black, black but they you know what I mean I, I, I they just you can't you, what you mean, mean? I mean, it's, the it's, black it's, people just it's not true I mean it's just I'm talking are. about like you know Crushing where where it. you have Atlanta Crushing. and you have you know a base like you guys being Valley from here Crushing. the people who what? are from DC don't benefit from oh, okay, the, the successes you. of the city the way they come from else. they come from somewhere else when I was in DC I was like oh damn it's a division here. I hate when I see a division in black culture where when I'm like, bro, y'all so close to each other. Why y'all why y'all beefing? It's a 20 minute drive. Like, this is stupid. Or oh, whatever. But it's like, this has been generations and generations of like, yeah. you're working to get on this side. So if you're on that side, uh, uh sir. Yeah, yeah. Right. How did you get Stay there? Over there Who until did you, you pay? Here. Right, exactly. And it's like, bruh, let the nigga over here and show him how to stay here. Damn. 
<laughs> but that's a crazy that's perspective. A, yeah, you know, we we got ways to go, but our culture gonna make it. We're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. Don't ever count my niggas out. Count my niggas out. Don't be safe too, guys. Man. Yes, Homework, sir. Dad socks. Um, shout out to my brother RGB. Tell them where they can get the shoes, all your products. Oh, yeah, this hands hard too, with you, man. I need it's a black owned company, them. RGB. Let's go. Atlanta. However, support where, where black owned businesses. Where are they working at? Find those. Um, RGB.com. 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 RGB. 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 Hey man, I just try not to show y'all your side. my shit because y'all always talking shit. It's my dog. Yo, go go. Hey man, you have to roll yours up. Don't let it be feeling Come on. honest, man. Yes, I got sir. a question hey. for you, bud. Yeah. Question. 2013, Charles Marino. Yeah, in Donald Glover. Can you speak to just like that early, you know, working with him, and did you did you think or see that how impactful he? Yes, um, meeting Donald Glover, Charles Gambino, however you want to refer to him. Um, I identify with him because he grew up Jehovah's Witness. I grew up Jehovah's Witness. Mm. So when I saw that left to center awkwardness, I was like, oh, he's just a Jehovah's Witness. How whatever. So to me, like the first time I met him is like, oh, he flew me out to, um, to come do the thing with him in Chris Bosch's old mansion in LA. Nice ass mansion on the hills, pool off the side of the hill. You know what I'm saying? It's just amazing here. It's me and Chance the Rapper playing Connect Four, just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Life is great. Right. I don't ever know what I'm saying. I at the time, I don't even know who this, who Chance the Rapper is. Mm -hmm. How whatever? It's just like, oh, I'm going to play. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to play. I'm going I'm to bust this nigga. He don't know how good I am at this game. It's actually the only game I'm good at. Right. How whatever? <laughs> Kill this light skinned nigga right now. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, it's a long time ago. I'm racist. Yeah. I'm sorry. How <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm saying? I've gotten way better with black culture over the years. Um, and, but to, you know, see, being around him, he is a very great curator to me of the people that he, his his association. So it showed me then, I was just like, damn, I gotta find some artsy friends, artsy new friends. I had my current friends, but we were so street. Like, I come from like street shit, bro, which is like, I'm not down on it. It's just like, bro, that has a certain type of skill set with it. Right. And if I'm not doing that skill set, then it's kind of yeah. like useless in the things that I'm doing now at the time. So when I got around him and his entourage of people, how whatever, I was like, damn, these niggas know songs I never heard of that, that helped me make better, make, help me make my next album. Like me and them helped me do Tempe Smile, my next project, where I was like, ooh, what if I do a song that has Gucci Man, Scooter, Alley Boy, and then, oh, wait a minute. I just did this thing with Charles Gambino. He from the east side. Stone Mountain is the east side, the suburbs, and the hood. If it got black people in it, it's still one. It's just a different type of house. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like that's like me and him showed me that like we gonna be all right type situation because left to center is okay. And it seeing Atlanta later on and just seeing how he move, it's like, duh, this dude right here could make Star Wars by himself. And yeah. New Face brought you some Love. shit. New Face! New Face in these knees! Atlanta legend, ghetto legend, legend, legend. Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, oh wow. No, yeah, we do it. Yes, 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 yes. Then you open that up. Trinidad oh, James in there. Woo! Oh, yes, sir. But then you open that up right there. Oh, that that first one. Look what's inside there. Yeah. Look what we got inside there. Oh! Come on, man. I need these. I need these in my own hands. Come on, man.